It is really that simple. It is not rocket science and people overthink it too much because they go into it with what's in it for me and what can I get out of this person? And if you have that attitude, like it's gonna be a hard road to success for you. But if you go into it and say, how can I bless this person today? Lord, who can you put in front of my life right now that I can just bless their socks off? And usually that doesn't take money. It takes words, it takes a smile, it takes your energy. And so when you show up and you give that consistently over time in all different types of communities, you're now known as the person that's gonna help me get to where I wanna go. You are a master networker, I would say. Oh, thank you. How do you think (laughs) that the relationship capital you've built over the last decade has impacted your ability to jump full speed into real estate? I would not be doing what I'm doing today without the network that I have. You know, 12 years ago when I got started in, you know, building out my brand, I was a a very much like a, a shy person, okay? I just wanted to like come home, bake cupcakes, play with my son Cooper, and like go to church on the weekends. Like I didn't have like I wasn't motivated to meet people. You know what I mean? Like I just wanted my little family, okay? And I'm still very much that way. Like my comfort zone is to just be at home. I don't want to do anything. So I think it's important to tell people that because, you know, in order to become a master networker, people think you have to have a certain personality. And so I want you to know I'm still uncomfortable doing all of those things that I do. I make myself do it because I have big goals and I'm committed to those goals that I have, right? So I... I, always I'm going outside of my comfort zone when I go to these things. I constantly am in masterminds, okay? And I always vet out the masterminds that I go in because I've been in some masterminds where there's like complete con artists in there. So I always like try to find out like, okay, how do you find people for this group? What's the vetting process? Are these people like legit in this group? Even then still some people will seep in that are not the real deal. So I learned to do my due diligence on people. And I always go into rooms and I always say, what can I give? to the people in this room. And I know the number one way I can give to somebody is helping them think different about their future and about the way that they are showing up on social media. Because I've met so many guys that they're awesome and they have so much goodness to say. And I'm like, hey, dude, like, can I be honest with you? Your brand on social media does not reflect who you are in real life. Like you need to start investing in your brand. And I don't make any money on that, by the way. Like I'm not that person that's going to like do these videos and all that kind of stuff. But I'll just be like, hey, heads up. I'm a truth teller. So that's what helps me be successful in the relationships that I'm creating is like, you know, I'm not going to give you any fluff. I'm not here to necessarily like make you feel good about where you are today. I'm here to show you what's possible for your future. And I walk into any room. I don't care if you make 10 gazillion times more money than me. Like I will show up and be who I am meant to be. And that's to tell you the truth and see how I can help you. Right. So I think that's helpful because people know what they're going to get with me. And when people feel that, like you're consistent, like I always know Kayla's gonna show up this way, then they trust you more. They're gonna bring you the deals. They're gonna bring you their network to do a deal with you, you know? And what about the person who's like, but I don't have a big network. Like, where do I start? That's why you got to start getting into rooms. I mean, and there's so many free meetups, right? There's free Facebook groups. There's all these free things. Like you listen to a podcast right now and it's a successful person. I guarantee you that person has a community. Get inside of their free community. Go in there, add value. Don't be the person that goes in there and complains. Oh my gosh, you did a live video and you said this grammar thing wrong. Like, no, but don't be that person. Okay, like be the person that said, oh my gosh, Kayla, I love that reel that you did. This really stood out to me. Then you're, the podcaster is paying attention to you, right? They're like, oh, I like Sally. Sally's cool. She's on my radar. Okay, I'm going to start looking into Sally. And then other people in the community are like, oh, Sally is so positive. I want to make friends with her. All of a sudden, you start to grow your network just by encouraging somebody else. Like it is really that simple. It is not rocket science and people overthink it too much because they go into it with what's in it for me and what can I get out of this person? And if you have that attitude, like it's gonna be a hard road to success for you. But if you go into it and say, how can I bless this person today? Lord, who can you put in front of my life right now that I can just bless their socks off? And usually that doesn't take money. It takes words, it takes a smile, it takes your energy. And so when you show up and you give that consistently over time in all different types of communities, you're now known as the person that's going to help me get to where I want to go. And obviously, like the first person someone needs to do, like to bring into their world is a mentor. 
But do you think a mentor needs to come in the form of someone who can help you with mindset up front or strategy? Is there a, a best for that? Hmm, that's a really good question. I think you need to find somebody that has both. I mean, I'm somebody that has both. I bring mindset and strategy to my clients because it's it's so important because you can have the best strategy in the world, but if your energy sucks, you're never going to get to where you want to go. You know what I mean? So I think that you need to find that unicorn in your world that can give it to you like in both. Now, maybe you're like, I'm already like jazz and I have great energy. Like I'm filled with so much joy. And now you're just like, I am stuck. I don't know what are the next steps in my business that are going to take me from level three to five. Go and find the strategy person, right? And sometimes the people who are the best, like I'm talking the best, the best at their craft, they only do like one thing. They're usually like the weirdest people or they don't have like that, ooh, goody, like make you feel good type of personality. You know what I mean? Like, and I would say for me, like I don't have that one thing that I'm like really, really good at because I'm, you know, like I'm all over the place. But I always say like, don't count that person out just because they're not the nicest person and they don't make you feel all warm and fuzzy because usually it's because they're so extremely smart and they can say like that one thing that can absolutely change your business. So you, you really need to know exactly what it is that you are going for and then make sure you hire the person that has what you want. It's going to change over time. What about the person who their spouse isn't on board with them getting into investing and doing the different things? Is there a way you encourage them to have those conversations or to get that started? I think it's really important to understand what it is that you want, okay? Do I want to be in a marriage where I have somebody that's put their thumb on me? This is what you can do. This is what you can't do. And your potential is going to be just squashed all the time because they they run that show. If you want to be in that marriage and you're committed to that type of marriage, then, you know, turn off this video right now because you don't want to hear what else I have to say. Like, honestly, because you, you need to like protect your mind if that's like the vision you're committed to, okay? Then there's these people over here that are like, you know what? I want to stay married, but I also want to stay married to my dreams too. I'm going to have it all. And that was me. So I'm, I'm talking to a former version of myself. When I first started out 12 years ago, my husband was like not on the same page as me. Okay. He, ha- he had very much of an employee mindset. And here I am like wanting to risk everything we had ever talked about to do something differently. And so we had to have a lot of conversations around why this new future I wanted to create was so important to me. And I had to lay it out like, we're, we're going to have a big family. I used to want five kids. And so I was like, we're going to have five kids. We're going to need a lot of money. And, you know, I want to travel all over the world. Babe, when we're 40, we're going to be on a yacht in the middle of the ocean on one of those trampoline thingies, okay? We're going to have so much freedom and so much money. And Chase, like, eventually I kept telling him, like, these things I wanted to do. And he started to see the money, like, flowing in because I was making money. I wasn't spending any money, okay? I was making money online. And so he saw the proof in the pudding that I was doing something different and there were direct results coming to bless our family. So I think that's very important. Like, don't just be a talker because you might've talked about a lot of things. And so he's like, she's woohoo, you know, show him that you're for real, like show him you're going to make it happen. And because at that point, if they choose to still try to squash the dream, then, you know, you got to have a real conversation of like, is this the type of relationship I want to be in? And what I ha- what happened for us was because I was not just a talker, I was a doer, Chase started to think differently. And that, that was a turning point in our relationship. He started to go, oh, what are the possibilities? What's going to happen for us? We bought our dream home. In 10 years sooner than we thought we could buy our dream home, we bought our dream home. Or we were able to remodel it. We lived next door to his parents. Like we were achieving our dreams at record speed. And so he started to think about possibilities for his life. And that's, again, it's contagious, right? And so we started to just feed off of each other and start to dream bigger and bigger and bigger. Of course, I know it doesn't happen like that for everybody, but again, I'm an action taker and I get what I want because I'm committed to having all the things I want. So you gotta check your commitment level and also like get on your knees and pray about that situation. Like I knew God wasn't gonna give me the desire of, you know, being wealthy and helping a lot of people and break up my marriage at the same time. Like, I just didn't think that was a thing. Like, that's not going to happen. What needs to happen is Chase is eventually going to come alongside me. And all I got to do is just keep doing the do. 
And that's what happened because that's the story I told myself. But some people get into these things and they're like, oh, I can't do anything because my husband sucks and he's this and he's that. It's like, okay, if you continue to say out loud that your husband sucks, then that's what you get. And he's going to suck even more. Like, you know, you're just going to focus on all the negative things about him. But you need to control what you can control. Go make money. Go, go seize the opportunity and make it happen without using any of your own money. And then see what he has to say then. When you start bringing home big checks, he's not going to be like, <gasps> and if he is, then you, I mean, literally, like, I would say see it on the way out. Like, okay, like, I mean, wait, what is that thing? Don't let the door hit you on the way out. But that's just me because, like, I, I don't believe that it's, like, safe to stay in a marriage with somebody that takes you uh, off of your path. Like, that's, that's abuse. And I think more people need to be, like, aware of that. Like that's not okay to be with somebody that is emotionally telling you, you can't do something. You're not good enough. That is not okay. So if you're in that type of relationship right now, like you should get help because you, you're, if you're watching this right now, there's something inside of you that's drawn to greatness and you are meant for great things. And it's time you start remembering how much power you have inside of you to reach your potential, to impact the world. Mm -hmm.